get started in extended child's pose. Big toes together to touch, spread your knees wide. Reach your arms forward, rest your forehead down. Feel your head, your forehead, touching down into the floor. Bend your elbows some, take the reach out of your arms. Inhale through your nose. Open mouth, exhale, sigh it out. Again, breathe in. Open mouth, exhale, sigh. Again, inhale. Open mouth, exhale, sigh. Breathe in and out through your nose. Add ujjayi, constrict the back of your throat so your breath has volume, texture. Keep holding in child's pose. When or if the urge to move out of it, to move forward, to get on with it comes up, just take it. Take the seat of the observer. Practice observing that urge thought pattern. When or if that distraction comes up, refocus in on your breath. I'm still in child's pose. I'm going to feel into your hands, spread your fingers. You feel even the tips of your fingers spread. Reach your arms forward and press your hands into the floor. Send your shoulder blades onto your back. So even though you're reaching through your hands, stabilize your shoulder blades onto your back. Now press up to tabletop, hands and knees. Curl your toes under, hover your knees off the floor. So it's hover, tabletop, and hold. Spread your fingers, press down, especially through your pointer fingers and your shoulder blades onto your back. Tuck your chin slightly so the back of your neck gets long. Lift the back of your head up slightly. Reach the top of your head forward. Create a pull with your feet so it's as if you'll drag your feet forward. And when you do that, feel how your front line engages. Breathe. Simply breathe. When or if the urge to move out of it, to get on with it comes up, observe it. Reconnect with the breath. Inhale. Exhale, down dog. Hips lift, bring some movement. Bend your knees, sway your hips, shake your head. We'll get still, spread your fingers, press through your pointer fingers, your thumbs, your fingertips, send your shoulder blades onto your back, relax your head. Stretch your hips up and back, bring some amount of bend into your knees. Now look forward, step your feet behind your hands, ragged off. Feet, hip width, distance or wider, grab for elbows or interlace hands at the base of your head. You can bend your knees, you can hold still, or you could sway. Hands to the floor, feet together. Bend your knees, tuck your chin, uncurl, rise to stand. Head comes up last. At the top, roll out your shoulders. Roll out your head. 
Samastitihi. Hands together, heart center. Either close your eyes or take a soft gaze. Feel your feet press down. Engage your legs. Pull your belly in. Press your hands together, even your fingertips. From that pressure of your fingertips, send your shoulder blades down with your chest. Set an intention for your practice. You can choose it with someone or something. Option two, set your intention to trust the practice, to trust, trust the, process it, the process of it unfolding. There's a lot that happens and our aim is to be the observer, to be present for the unfolding. And a big part of that is trusting the process. So option set your intention to that. We'll send it out one breath. Inhale, fill up. Open mouth, exhale, send it out. Ujjayi, inhale, extended mountain pose, arms lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, high plank pose. Hold in high plank. Activate through your hands. Spread your fingers. Press the tips of your fingers into the floor. Send your shoulder blades onto your back. Tuck your chin slightly. Back of your head lifts up. Top of your head reaches forward and create the pull with your feet. Like you'll drag your feet forward. Shift to your tippy toes. Bend your elbows lower halfway. Chaturanga. Hold. Elbow squeeze in. Shoulders back. Broad chest. Upward facing dog. Press the tops of your feet down. Lift your chest. Send your shoulders back. Tuck your chin. Back of your neck is long, belly strong, low plank, bend your knees, curl, or bend your elbows, curl your toes under, push up high plank, down dog, a pause in down dog. So next you'll flow through sunne and I'm going to cue and I'll move through that extra push up in chaturanga. You can skip it. You could bend your knees and bring your knees to the floor as you do it. Aim for quality of the movement versus the number of times you do that. All right. Exhale all the way. Breathe in. Look forward. Exhale. Step or jump. Top of your mat. Inhale. Halfway lift. Exhale. Forward fold. Inhale. Extended mountain. Exhale. Forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana, high to low plank. Inhale, upward facing dog. Here it is. If you choose, exhale, low plank, toes curl under. Inhale, high plank. Exhale, down dog. Breathe in, look forward. Exhale, step or jump, top of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, extended mountain. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. Here it is. If you choose, exhale, low plank. Toes curl under. Inhale, high plank. Exhale, down dog. Breathe in, look forward. Exhale, step or jump, top of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, hands to heart center and hold it. Breathe. Press your hands together, even the tips of your fingers. Send your shoulder blades onto your back. Feel the hinge at your hips. So as you add depth in chair, hips go back. Chest comes forward to maintain this neutral in your spine. So it's not like upright, but it's also not down. Somewhere in the middle, neutral. It all comes from that hinge at your hips. Press your right foot down, hover your left foot. Breathe, spread your left toes, pull your belly in, steady your gaze, send your shoulder blades onto your back. Step your left foot down, settle, feel both feet grounded. Hover your right foot, hold it, spread your right toes. So your right leg is lifted, but you're also engaged in your right leg. Even though you're standing on your left belly strong, press your palms together, broaden your chest. Right foot down, left foot lifts, breathe in. Left foot down, breathe out. Right foot lifts, breathe in. Right foot down, breathe out. Chair pose, inhale. 
Exhale, hands to your low back, back bend. Press your hips forward. Inhale, chair. Exhale, hands heart center, left foot hovers. This time, crescent lunge. Step your left foot back, lift your arms up, hold it and breathe. Settle into your legs, right knee, right toes, point forward. Press to the ball mound of your left big toe. Aim for neutral hips, so draw your left hip forward. And you might bend into your left knee to allow more access for your left hip to draw forward, right hip back. Spin your pinky fingers in. Tip forward, extended crescent with cactus arms. Bend your elbows, draw your shoulders back and down. Breathe. Feel this hinge at your right hip. Draw your right hip back. And this arm variation is like intended to drill the muscles of your upper back. Pull your belly in. Inhale, warrior two, open to the side. Exhale, side angle. Hold side angle. Press to the outside edge of your left foot. Take that cactus arm variation, shoulders onto your back, broad chest, and feel that drill of your back. Draw your right hip back. Inhale, reverse warrior. Right hip lifts, reach up and back. Exhale, hands to the floor, left leg, squeeze it into your chest. So you're standing on your right leg, hold that. Hands or fingertips on the floor, spread your shoulder blades apart, tuck chin to chest, pull your belly in. Step your left foot down. Inhale, chair. Exhale, hands, heart center, right foot hovers. Inhale, crescent lunge. Right foot back, arms up, hold it, breathe. Settle into the legs. Acknowledge the urge to move forward to get on with it. Observe it. Stay in the pose. Left knee, left toes forward. Reach through your right heel. And then it's a big stretch through the front of your right thigh. As you draw your right hip forward, you might want to bend into your right knee to get more access to draw the right hip forward. Spin your pinky fingers in. Tip forward, extended crescent. Bend your arms, cactus arms. Draw your shoulders onto your back. Draw your left hip back. Feel this extra strength in your upper back from the arm variation. Open warrior two. Breathe in. Exhale, side angle. Hold the pose with the lower body. Add the cactus arms. Bend your elbows. And it says drill of the upper back strength. Hinge at your left hip. Inhale, reverse warrior. Left hip lifts. Right hand, right thigh. Exhale, hands to the floor, right knee, so that's the back leg, squeezes into your chest, chin to chest. Hands on the floor, shoulder blades spread apart, right foot down. Inhale, extended mountain. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, chaturanga dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. Here it is, if you choose. Exhale, low plank. Inhale, high plank. Exhale, down dog. Flow, sun B. One breath, one pose at a time. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, step or jump, top of your mat. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, chair. Exhale, hands, heart, left foot hovers. Inhale, crescent lunge. Exhale, tip forward, cactus arms. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, side angle. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, hands to the floor, left knee squeezes to chest, step it down. Inhale, chair. Exhale, hands, heart, right foot hovers. Inhale, crescent lunge. Exhale, tip forward, cactus arms. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, side angle. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, hands to the floor, right knee squeezes to chest, step it down. Inhale, mountain, extended arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, chaturanga dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. If you choose, exhale, low plank. Inhale, high plank. Exhale, down dog. Breathe in, look forward. Exhale, step or jump, top of your mat, same flow. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, chair. Exhale, hands to heart, left foot hovers. 
Inhale, crescent lunge. Exhale, tip forward, cactus arms. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, side angle. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, hands to the floor, left knee squeezes to chest, step it down. Inhale, chair. Exhale, hands heart, right foot hovers. Inhale, crescent lunge. Exhale, tip forward, cactus arms. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, side angle. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, hands to the floor, right knee, squeeze it to chest, step it down. Inhale, extended mountain. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, low plank. Inhale, high plank. Exhale, down dog. Breathe in, look forward. Exhale, step or jump, top of your mat. Add to it this round. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, chair. Exhale, hands heart, left foot hovers. Inhale, crescent lunge. Exhale, tip forward, cactus arms, and hold it. Breathe. Draw your right hip back. Hold the legs. Drill the upper body. As you breathe in, reach your arms forward. As you breathe out, elbows bend back. Feel the strength in your upper back. Again, inhale forward. Exhale back. One more. Inhale forward. Exhale back. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, side angle. And you'll hold it. Hold side angle. Take the drill. Bend your elbows. Press to the outside edge of your left foot. Feel this action in your hips. So right hip draws back, left hip will roll forward slightly. And it's that same neutral that you're going for in your back. And then there's this strength, this extra activation in your upper back. Feel broadness in your chest. Add a half bind or a full bind, or you could simply extend your arms out. So you choose the variation. If you're going for the full bind, it'll be right arm underneath your right thigh to hook hands or grab fabric of your outfit. Breathe. And as you hold in the pose, it's a pretty intense pose. There's a lot of physicality to it. Feel, just like when you drilled the strength of your back, feel that engagement in your upper back, broadness in your chest. And then even within the challenge of it, the physicality of it, soften around your breath. When that urge to move out of it comes up, you practice simply observing. Inhale, star pose, heels in, toes out. Exhale, horse with cactus arms, bend your knees, bend your elbows, hold it. So here's again, that strength in your upper back, feel it. Hands to heart center. Use your hands in this position. So you'll press your hands together, even the tips of your fingers, and it's still an activation for the upper back, although it's much softer. Feel hands together, shoulders back, lift your chest. It's not quite that same like going past neutral. It's more of a supported neutral with the hands at heart center. Add some depth in your legs. Hands to your thighs. Use your arms as leverage to lift your chest. Breathe in. Exhale, twist towards the right. Inhale, center. Exhale, twist left. Take one more round, each side, center, breathe in. Exhale, twist right. Inhale, center. Exhale, twist left. Now back to center. Hands at heart center, so that soft engagement to feel neutral in your upper back. Inhale, star. Exhale, prasarita. Toes point to the side edge of your mat. 
wide-legged forward folds. And you choose this. You can be active, grip your legs or grip the floor, pull down. You can also make it passive, grab for opposite elbows or interlace hands at the base of your head and allow your upper body to be relaxed. Whether it's an active or passive variation, you can add a bend to your knees. And even in fact, oftentimes when you're stretching the hamstring, so this is both um, an inversion, head below your heart, and also a big stretch for the backs of the legs. Oftentimes when you're stretching your hamstrings, you get more access by bending your knees, even if you're really flexible because you add um, the engagement on the front line. Tip more weight forward into your toes. And now whether you're active or passive variation, bring your hands to your hips. Bend your knees more. Even if you have your bent knees bent, bend them more. Lift up halfway. Squeeze your elbows towards each other behind you and feel this engagement in your upper back. Belly strong. You hinge at your hips. So spine is neutral. Legs are strong. Belly engaged. Now rise all the way up. Warrior two. Bend into your right knee. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, hands to the floor. Left knee, back leg squeezes to chest. Step it down. Inhale, chair. Exhale, hands, heart center, right foot hovers. Inhale, crescent lunge. Exhale, tip forward, cactus arms, bend your elbows, hold it. Breathe, steady, smooth. Feel left hip draw back, so there's that hinge at the hip. Add the drilling of the arms. Inhale, reach your arms forward. Exhale, cactus arms. Again, inhale forward. Exhale, cactus. One more, inhale forward. Exhale, cactus. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, side angle. Hold it. Press to the outside edge of your right foot. Cactus your arms. A short amount of time with this extra activation in the back line. Feel broadness in your chest, strength in your upper back, hinge at your left hip. And now add the arms as you want. So it could be extend the arms or a half bind or a full bind. Less important what the arm variation is. So trust that your arm variation is it's perfect. And now bring this engagement to your upper back, broadness in your chest. Steady breathing within the challenge of the pose, physically demanding pose. Press to the outside edge of your right foot. Inhale, star. Heels in, toes out. Exhale, horse, cactus arms. Bend your elbows, bend your knees. You'll feel this. Activation upper back, and then hands heart center. Palms press together, feel the strength of your upper back, but softer, broad chest, hold it. If you want, add the lift of your heels. And when or if that urge to move out of it, to move forward, to get on with it comes up, practice observing that thought process, that pattern. Simply stay. Heels down if they're lifted. Straighten your legs. Wide-legged forward fold. So toes point to the wide edge, long edge of your mat. Fold forward. And again, for this one, you let it be active or passive. So if it's active, grip your legs or grip the floor, pull down. If it's passive, ragdoll, or you could even take chest expansion. Okay. One more breath. Bring your hands to the floor. Skandasana. Bend into your left knee. Extend your right leg long. And how low your hips go will be 
unique to you. So you might come low, you might lift your left heel. With your right foot, you can keep your foot planted. You can come onto your right heel. Hands on the floor or hands at heart center. Lots of variations into it. Essentially, the aim is to bring compression into one leg and extension into the inner leg line of the opposite leg. Come to center. Switch sides. Bend into your right knee. Extend your left leg long. And again, you could keep your left foot planted. You could roll onto your left heel. With breath, inhale center. Exhale, bend into your left leg. Inhale center. Exhale, bend into your right leg. Take a couple more rounds. If you want to move fluidly, you can. If you want to hold on one side for a couple rounds of breath, feel free. Finish the second side. Come back to center. Bend your knees. Hands at your hips. Squeeze your elbows towards each other. Rise all the way up. Warrior two to the front. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, hands to the floor. Right knee, so that's the back leg, squeezes into your chest. Step it down. Inhale, extended mountain. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Come down to your knees. Next, we'll practice tripod headstand. So a tripod headstand, uh, the foundation is your two hands and the top of your head. And what you're aiming to do is create a triangle. So the, your hands are in a line at the bottom of the triangle, and then you want your head at the point. So if your head is too close to your hands, you'll be more tippy. Hands here, head farther, you'll be more stable of a foundation. So we're going to take this actually with um, wide legs. So come into uh, feet at least as wide as your mat. Bend your elbows. Tip forward. I need to bring my hands a little bit closer and tip forward. And tuck your chin. Top of your head comes down onto the floor. And now as you're here, you could stay right here with your feet on the ground. Send your shoulder blades up your back. If you want, climb your knees onto the backs of your arms. You could also bring one leg into your chest, just like you practice in that forward fold transition, lift one leg up. Try the other leg into your chest, lift it up. Try lifting both legs up. Feel shoulders on to your back. Stay two more breaths, whatever that means, whether it's feet on the floor or lifting all the way up. After your second breath, child's pose. Arms forward or arms at your side. Touch your forehead down. Down dog. Breathe in, look forward. Exhale, step or jump to the top of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, hands, heart center, twist to the right. Hook your left elbow either between your knees or outside of your right knee. Weight your heels, reach your hips back, press hand to hand, elbow to knee, twist to the right. So you use your connection points and then feel that strength in your upper back. 
broaden your chest. If you want, you could take an arm variation, open arms, take a bind, or take side curl. Extend the top of your head forward, reach your hips back. Twist it out for three. Last two. One, forward fold. Separate your feet hip width distance. Crow pose, bakasana. It helps me to set my feet back a little bit so I have which room to shift forward. So what you'll do is you'll plant your hands. Just like a tripod headstand, spread your fingers wide. Just like plank, down dog, press the tips of your fingers into the floor. Bend your knees, bend your elbows straight back. Knees onto the backs of your arms. Look forward, start to shift your body weight forward. Send your shoulders onto your back. So whether your feet lift or stay on the floor, the key to the action is to look forward and shift forward. If, you're, if you feel like you have the balance, you could try lifting up one foot, both foot. If your feet stay lifted, squeeze your big toes to touch, heels towards your seat, shoulders back, broad chest. Pull your belly and hold it, three. Last two, one, feet down, feet together. Chair pose, inhale, exhale, twist left. Hands together, right elbow, either between your knees or outside your left knee. Weight your heels, reach your hips back, shoulder blades onto your back. Now feel that drill action in your upper back, shoulder blades squeeze towards each other, broad chest. And really what you're doing is you're recreating neutral where it serves in the pose. And what would be the opposite of neutral in your upper back or a non-neutral would be like shoulder blades, shoulder blades coming forward, closing off in the chest. So you're aiming to strengthen the upper back, broaden the chest. Take the variation if you want, open arms or a bind or side crow. Reach the top of your head forward. Hold it for three. Two, one, forward fold. Feet hip width distance, Pada Hastasana. Slide your hands underneath your feet so that your toes touch your wrists. Bend your knees any amount and make this active or passive. Active variation, you'll use your hands and your upper body to pull your chest towards your thighs. Send your shoulder blades up your back. If you're doing the passive variation, upper body relaxed, shoulder blades draw towards your ears. Whether it's active or passive, relax your head and neck. If it feels right to open mouth, exhale, go for it. Tip weight towards your toes. Now free your hands out from underneath your feet. Pause in the fold. Roll out your hands one way, the other way. And come down to a squat pose. So you could open your feet a little bit wider even. Sink your hips low. Whether your heels stay on the ground or heels lift. Hands on the floor. Relax your head. And make your way to kneeling. So next, practice crow to tripod headstand. And in some ways, I find it actually an easier way to access tripod. I move my bum back. Um, because you're kind of already in the position to move to tripod. So um, you can watch me. You can do it with me. Here we go. So again, I'm going to give myself space to shift forward because I want to have that foundation where if my hands are here, I want my head to be forward. Crow pose first. Elbows bend back, knees onto the backs of your arms. You look forward, shift forward. And you can practice this even if your feet stay on the ground and crow. So before you move into it, shoulders back. So you're working that strong, neutral foundation in your upper back. Now what you'll do is tuck your chin so the top of your head comes onto the floor. And you might notice that your feet will naturally lift up when you do that. So a really great check that you have um, a... a a wide enough or long enough rather foundation is I can see my hands. I can see all my hands, all parts of my hands in my gaze versus if I was kind of here, I might not be able to see my fingers. I can only see my thumbs. 
Okay, so got a wide base, and then you can actively squeeze your heels towards your seat, shoulders up your back. And you keep tipping weight into your forehead. If you fall out of it, tuck your chin and you'll roll forward. You can practice lifting one leg up, lifting both legs up. And even if your feet are still on the floor, practice this foundation shoulder blades up your back. Hold it, a couple rounds of breath. And if you feel good in that transition, challenge yourself by moving back to crow. So you'll bring your knees back to your arms. And the lift of your head is steady, heels towards your seat. You'll roll onto your forehead and off your head and gaze forward. And then once you're complete, child's pose, arms forward or arms at your side. Feel pressure on your forehead. Down dog. Lift your right leg. Half pigeon. And you can take this forward facing. You could also take the supine variation on your back. So if you're forward facing, set yourself up to rest your head down on your forearms or your fists. If you want to take the back variation, roll onto your back. Cross your right ankle over your left thigh. Interlace hands behind your left leg. Pull your knee in to stretch your outer right hip. As you hold here, emphasize the steady, smooth breath. And I, like half pigeon can be a delightful pose and it can be super suboptimal and super uncomfortable in a not enjoyable way. And wherever you are on that enjoyment scale, you know, practice asks us to be here anyway. Soften around the breath. Now, of course, be aware of like a sharp pain. If you're in a sharp pain, it's a good indicator to dial it down. Discomfort, sensation. A practice being present with it. One more breath round. And then you'll switch sides. And how you switch sides is up to you. You'll set yourself up. Left side, half pigeon, forward facing or on your back. And whether you're forward facing, so if you're forward facing, uh, you'll rest your forehead. If you're on your back, you'll rest the back of your head. Whichever way it is, allow your head to rest so your neck can release. Give this side space and time to move into the stretch.
two more breaths. Make your way onto your back after your second breath. And again, how you get there is perfect. So you can go through a down dog. And if you're on your back, you can simply stay there. On your back, once you're there, hug your knees into your chest. Create some pressure. Hug your knees in. Press your hips down. Press your upper back down, back of your head down. So you're not pressing your low back or your neck down. And so you're using the floor and the squeeze of your legs to neutralize your back. And compress into your hip flexors. Keep holding your right leg, extend your left leg long, pull your right knee across your body, twist to the right. Easy twist. Switch sides. Pause for a moment, both knees in, squeeze, and then right leg long. Left arm out, left leg across your body. Draw the center. Squeeze both knees in. Stay for a breath. And with your exhale, relax down to the floor. Final Shavasana. Let your toes relax open. Face your palms up to the ceiling. And close your eyes or take a soft gaze. Now, Final Shavasana is opposed to practice stillness. And it can be, it doesn't have to be, but it can be even more challenging or a different kind of challenge because you don't have the physicality, the details to focus in on. So as you hold here, when or if the distractions, urge to move, to fidget, to get on with it, come up. Practice observing. And staying right here alongside the distraction, the urge. Trust that your experience this time in Shavasana is exactly as needed. Take a fuller breath. Move your fingers, your toes, 
your wrists and ankles. And hug your knees into your chest. Rock forward and back a couple times along the length of your back. And then make your way to a tall seat. Hands at heart center, eyes closed or soft gaze. And feel hands pressed together, fingertips pressed together to your chest to your thumbs and feel this soft strength in your neutral spine. Supported upper back. Acknowledge your practice, your intention or dedication, your ability to trust in the unfolding of it. Lift your thumbs to the center of your forehead. Honor the light and teacher in all things and in all experiences. Namaste.